everybody, welcome, welcome. Uh, we are continuing our coverage at Gettysburg Address 158 Live. Uh, we're going live as much as we can out on the field and sometimes indoors like we are right now. We hope you'll share this with your friends because we have some cool stuff to show you. We are going to check out great artifacts from the Adams County Historical Society who are recataloging some of their stuff and, or no, cataloging, some of it which has never been cataloged before and they're finding all sorts of treasures. And we're gonna get to see all this cool stuff with our good friends at the ACHS. That's uh, Andrew Dalton over there, the director of the Adams County Historical Society and the historian. You've heard of him, Tim Smith as well. So let's come on over here, Chris. That's Chris White behind the camera. Um, who wants to go first? What do we have on this table? The first of many treasures. Well, thanks, Gary. I'll just set it up for Tim, I think. Of course, it's a very important day, November 19th, 158 years after the, the festivities surrounding Lincoln's visit and the Gettysburg Address. Uh, we have amazing artifacts that literally have not been seen or unpacked in many, many years. Um, and so we want to show you some of them, and they really um, are significant to that day. Uh, first, I think we'll start over here. We have some kitchenware that was actually in the David Wills house in the square of Gettysburg and very well might have been used uh, to serve uh, food and drinks to the presidential party that was there on the evening of November 19th, 1863. Uh, and they were served dinner in the downstairs of the David Wills house. And then uh, if you pan out a little bit, Chris, we have an artifact sitting in front of this chest and it's actually a original wooden pew from the Presbyterian Church in Gettysburg on Baltimore Street. This was the church where Abraham Lincoln attended services um, on the evening of no November 19th with uh, John Burns, the hero of Gettysburg, the local citizen who Tim can probably tell you more about since he wrote the book on John Burns. But this is an original wooden pew that was there that evening when Lincoln attended services in this church. And it was the pew occupied by the McConaughey family. David McConaughey, as some of you may know, is one of the most prominent early preservationists here in Gettysburg that helped found um, the Gettysburg Battlefield Memorial Association and had a lot to do with the establishment of the Soldiers National Cemetery. Uh, Tim, do you want to show us a few hold, more hold things? On, no, no, the, I, I want to stay here for a second. Here. I'm sorry. Thank you, Andrew. Man, I think you talked as fast as I do, which says quite a, quite a bit there. I must have scared you into thinking the video wasn't <laughs> going to be that long. Um, so, Tim, real quick, you know, can you set the scene for David Wills' house? I mean, I want to focus in on some of this because David Wills' dad is on it. I think, one, I think, I think his wife, his, her maiden name is on it. So, Tim, what's it like? Did they have a bunch of people over for dinner? Was it a crowded house? Well, you know, uh, the night before the Gettysburg Address, uh, Abraham Lincoln and his party arrived about uh, 6 p.m., uh, 7 p.m., and then they ate dinner at the Wills' house. And I know, according to one account, 38 people stayed in the Will's house that night. So there was a, a large dinner that was served and uh, some of these items were used at that dinner table. I, I really like this because, uh, you know, we often use these today, um, the napkin, uh, napkin holder, ring. napkin ring, and it does have um, uh, some initials on it. And I think this has um, a smizer on it. So it probably would, you know, S it ends with, so I'm assuming this is uh, David Will's wife's family. And, uh, uh, you know, a nice teapot that um, has uh, initials on it. That one, I think, says Wills. Yeah, and this one, it looks like JWW, which is probably uh, David Wills' father, uh, James Wills. And, um, you know, the pew is kind of interesting because for locals, this was a pew that was built for the original Presbyterian Church when it was in Gettysburg, uh, starting in 1817. Prior to that, the Presbyterian Church was uh, northeast of town, but this would have been from the 19, 1817 church on North Washington Street and then moved over to the um, Baltimore Street Church in 1842 uh, by the McConaughey, you know, it was the McConaughey family pew. And um, it would have been, uh, I think the pews in that church were replaced um, in the early 1920s, except for uh, the one that Abraham Lincoln actually sat on, which is still in the Presbyterian Church. Also wanted to mention that we have uh, some items from people that um, collected David Will's material. Uh, here is a uh, post-war pocket atlas, and you can see uh, uh, David Will's uh, sign, wrote his signature on it. And we have a copy of the Pennsylvania Supreme Court case that David Will's was involved in. Um, as a, uh, an attorney. And this is actually the court case uh, document between the members of the 72nd uh, uh, Pennsylvania and the Gettysburg Battlefield Memorial Association where they are arguing about 
uh, where the monument should be placed at the angle, if you've heard of that. So it's um, a fabulous document. There are other copies of it, and it has lots of accounts of soldiers and maps of um, the uh, fighting around the angle. And I know that people who are really into Pickett's Charge are really into this court case. And uh, uh, Andrew, I think wanted to show some other items that we have. Yeah, maybe we'll start right here just briefly. Um, so along the, the lines of the Lincoln <laughs> um, topic is, is Thaddeus Stevens, who's a, a contemporary of Lincoln in Congress at the time uh, during the Civil War. But earlier, he was an attorney in Gettysburg for several decades early in his legal career. And these are actually two whale oil lamps from Thaddeus Stevens' office here in Gettysburg uh, from probably about 1820. Um, and uh, if you come around this way, we'll show you a few more Lincoln-related items. Uh, hold on. Before we just move on, I want to you know, address some concerns I'm having. First of all, uh, it's, not, it's been a while since I've seen a Jean-Francois on here. So hello for, uh, to you in Canada. Uh, awesomeness in action. And to, somebody said, apparently, I need some energy. And maybe that be today. <laughs> I was mellow in the cemetery on purpose. And maybe the fluorescent lights are sapping my energy. So that's pretty interesting. So uh, share this with your friends. Keep commenting. We do uh, watch them. We really enjoy it. So, um, oh, man. And there's some other suggestions too. I'm going to turn it back over to you. Sure. Well, let's uh, look at a couple more artifacts here. This is something, again, that we just found that we're really excited about. This is a saw that was used by Jeremiah Culp, a local uh, woodworker who actually created many of the coffins following the Battle of Gettysburg. And of course, there were in an incredible number of coffins uh, that had to be made for the soldiers buried in the Soldiers National Cemetery. And that process of Burying the dead lasted months. It was not complete by November 19th, 1863. I think it went into February or March um, of 1864 of actually burying the Union dead in the National Cemetery. Um, here on this, uh, we actually have an 1850s piano, um, but we're kind of using it right now to, to show you a few more pieces uh, related to Lincoln in particular. This is one of our, our favorite items. It is an original campaign ribbon from the 1860 presidential election showing Abraham Lincoln and his vice president, Hannibal Hamlin, wow. who's probably one of the more obscure vice presidents in the history of the United States, surprisingly. Um, but uh, this is the original ribbon. Before they used campaign buttons, you'd see a lot of ribbons like this in use. Um, we also have this fantastic portrait of Abraham Lincoln that actually hung in the office of Edward McPherson in Washington, D.C. McPherson was our local congressman from Adams County um, at that time and actually lost his seat in 1862. Uh, there was a big backlash against Lincoln and the Republican Party, um, but then went back and became clerk of the House of Representatives. And we have a lot of artifacts related to the McPherson family. And of course, the McPherson's owned the, the farm on the battlefield that many of you probably know, the, the McPherson farm. And um, somebody might be suggesting, Tim, that it's actually pronounced McPherson. What do you have to say about that? There is no fear in a McPherson. Well, we know many descend descendants of the, of the McPherson family, and we, we know not to say it uh, the wrong way. Uh, it's a habit I've tried to break. And then uh, a few other items related specifically to the Gettysburg Address, and these are really fantastic and um, exceptionally rare. What, what Chris is looking at right now with the camera is an original program handed out that day at the Gettysburg Address ceremony at the dedication of the Soldiers National Cemetery. And you can see it lists the procession. Uh, there's a, a large parade leading out to this, the scene uh, of the, the uh, dedication. Um, and this is a program that was handed out that day. And, and in fact, there was a, a local business ended up keeping this program and writing all over it. They were doing some of their account work um, li like you do on a piece of scrap paper. So just like today, you know, you, you don't really recognize the significance, I think, of, of, of recent events. Um, and then we have these two other papers here. These are autographs that were collected from dignitaries who were there on the platform with Lincoln that day wow. uh, by David Will's daughter. So she, just like you know, you might get a selfie today <laughs> with a, a celebrity, she was running around and doing things the old-fashioned way, which you know, I'm sure most of us remember autographs. Yeah. You know, this is now a kind of a, a dying art. But these are autographs from the dignitaries. Roy Stone, the commander of the Bucktail Brigade at Gettysburg. Nice. Abner Doubleday. Um, Ward Lehman, Lincoln's bodyguard, is on there. And Andrew Curtin, the governor of Pennsylvania. Um, and Tim, do you want to show us what we have well, here? Um, one of the things that uh, we have in our collection uh, that, uh, you know, has been in our collection for quite a long time. It's actually from... Uh, the Moses, the family of Moses McLean and William McLean, but this is an actual book that was owned by the Reverend Alexander Dobbin, the of course, Dobbin. who built the Dobbin House in Gettysburg in 1776. He was a Presbyterian minister here, and you can see it's dated uh, 1791. 
But the most interesting thing about the book, well, besides the fact that Alexander Dobbin owned it, is the fact that the book was actually printed in London in 1699. And of course, it's a, one of the many religious texts that were in Alexander Dobbin's library. So an actual book from the library of Alexander Dobbin. One more thing that we've found recently that is just fantastic um, is this letter. We have um, many letters and diaries from local residents from the time of the battle and the Gettysburg Address, and very few of them, I would say, are from the, the very days that followed these events. And this is a letter that was written within just a few days of the Battle of Gettysburg by a 10-year-old girl who lived in Gettysburg on York Street. Her father was away in the Union Army, and I think the letter's good enough that I just want to read a couple sentences from it. Um, she wrote, Dear Father, I hope you are well. We are well. We have a Johnny Reb boarding with us now. And now she turns to talking about her family, her baby sister. Mary is as fat as ever. Grandmother had four little chickens stolen from her. There were 20 rebels brought in on Thursday, one rebel here now that was in the service one week. And then uh, she writes on the back, which is just kind of chilling, um, and this speaks to the, the aftermath of the battle. Um, there was an old man here all night hunting his son. He offered May 50 cents, and he gave Emma 25 cents, and Fanny too. I have nothing more to say. Goodbye. Ollie King. So this is within just days of the battle. This is the original handwritten letter. It's the earliest civilian account that we have of the battle. Um, and wow. we just found it a few months ago. And I think that, Andrew Tim, speaks to the, the import of the stuff of history, right? I mean, we go out on the battlefield a lot. We love that. And we know you like it as well. You're with the American Battlefield Trust, by the way. But just the idea of, you know, there would be something lost if, if, if we didn't understand it through the old stuff, uh, artifacts and accounts and whatnot. But something about being able to hold this or to, to touch the book. And by the way, good job. You didn't tell us to wear gloves or anything like that. They are allowed to handle their artifacts the way they'd like, um, as I would say. So um, anything you want to add to that about the importance of artifacts before we move on? Well, let's uh, walk over. And we have a few more artifacts that we can talk about over here. But uh, oh. So one thing that uh, a lot of people talk about, especially when in people of interest in the battlefield, is the dinosaur footprints that are on the bridge uh, near Big Round Top over Plum Run. And you probably know those dinosaur footprints came from a quarry near York Springs, not too far north of Gettysburg, and um, uh, Trossel's Quarry. And while they were working, uh, in you know, gathering stones for construction projects on the battlefield, they found about uh, 30 different footprints and a number of stones um, at this quarry. And we have some really incredible examples of these dinosaur footprints in our collection. This particular stone has uh, two really nice uh, dinosaur uh, footprints, and then it has um, a portion of a third up here that you can see. And obviously the the thing about this is, you know, a dinosaur stepped in mud 200 million years ago, and, uh, you know, uh, more mud came to be on top of it. It, uh, it hardened into rock, and, you know, and then it was excavated in uh, 1936, I believe, and here it is today. And, you know, um, at some point we'll have it on display so everybody can... Um, enjoy it and uh, learn more about it. Now, yeah, Tim, you seem to know something about this. Andrew, what do you have there? In 1995, we should just show this incredible article of Tim bringing attention to the dinosaur footprints on the Gettysburg battlefield <laughs> from the same quarry that you can go out and see at the base of Big Round Top. And that's a dark-haired Tim. From, from <laughs> I remember that guy. <laughs> All right, let's keep moving, y'all. We have more over here. Uh, Tim, Andrew, another just complete table of cool treasures. Uh, I think one of the things that we have here that... Uh, um, maybe a lot of people don't realize is we have a huge collection of Native American artifacts uh, from the fields and, uh, you know, near the streams and creeks of Adams County that have been discovered over the years. And since the Adams County Historical Society came into existence, you know, the entity we are now, um, in the 1940s, people have been donating collections of artifacts, and we literally have, uh, you know, thousands of arrowheads and spear points and stone, uh, a number of stone axes such as this that have been discovered um, in the area. And um, this one, I believe, from, um, or, or this one, we believe, is discovered in downtown Gettysburg, not far from 
uh, Rock Creek on the eastern portion of the town. We have a number of items uh, relating to Adams County uh, military, um, not just uh, the Civil War, like you might expect, but uh, soldiers from this area served in uh, every American war, uh, from the Revolution up through uh, modern wars. This is a World War I, um, uh, you know, haversack or knapsack, and you can see that the soldiers ha has written on it the campaign that was involved in. He was in the 313th um, regiment, or it's the 316th regiment of the 29th division, the blue and gray division, and it has the places that um, he was uh, um, stationed or uh, passed through in um, France up until the end of the war in Germany. And this is just an incredible piece by a guy from um, uh, York Springs, Pennsylvania, and it's a piece of hardtack from the Spanish-American War. And he had written on it uh, the camp where he um, you know, had his basic training. And you can see he's with the 4th uh, Pennsylvania Regiment and was deployed in uh, Puerto Rico uh, during the Spanish-American War. And he has um, uh, some of the engagements listed on there where, uh, you know, where he participated. Just a, a fabulous piece. Um, one of my favorite things in our collection are items that are related to early battlefield guides. And, you know, today when uh, we have a large group of people on the battlefield, we end up yelling to them. But you can imagine um, in the older days when uh, people were riding or standing on the running boards of automobiles giving tours of the battlefield, you might have to give the tour through the megaphone. So we have an actual megaphone by, uh, from an early battlefield tour guide. Um, I say an early guide, but uh, this particular guide I actually knew at the end of his career. So, um, but this would be from a licensed battlefield guide. I, Tim, Tim I, I have a request here for somebody for you to say how you feel about ghosts on the megaphone. Oh, on the megaphone? Yeah, yes. Okay. Yes. It, that there request. are no ghosts in Gettysburg. <laughs> All right. There you go. Um, uh, everybody, real quick, I know he's got another thing to talk about, but real quick, uh, we know the feed's cutting out. We're going to keep on shooting. Uh, this video can appear in full later, so do your best. It's cutting in and out, but it seems to be pretty good while we're, you know, over closer to the, shall I say, to the south. So, Tim, just keep going. You're with the American Battlefield Trust. We know the feed's coming out, cutting out. Stick with it, and you'll get to watch it later if it does. You want to? Sure. Yeah, so um, this is actually a, a really neat piece. Um, the poor house or alms house in Gettysburg was really a significant complex of buildings at the time of the Civil War. It was a hospital. Um, there were people living there, um, and it was kind of a, a, a place for all different types of people. There, it was a nursing home. It was a you know a halfway house. It was um, it was a, a homeless shelter, kind of all wrapped in one. So you can imagine the, the terrible conditions that that were uh, present. But this is a, a, some sort of a saddle part or a, a, a something you drape over the side of a saddle from the Adams County Alms House, uh, probably dating to before the Civil War. If anybody is a horse enthusiast and knows more about what this might be, we would actually be really thrilled to, to hear from you since we just opened this um, out of a box just uh, a few days ago. Uh, but why don't we come down here and we'll, we'll show you just a couple more items related to one of the most famous structures in the town of Gettysburg. Yeah, and Tim, yeah, Tim uh, we're going to ask you to talk uh, about this photo here first. What is this? Some of you just missed the Tim run there, by the way. Uh, he told me to watch it with the hair comments. Our friend Don Moody and Jean-Francois said I pronounced his name properly. Note I didn't do the last name. Um, and uh, stick with us, y'all. So this is an image of the Adams County Courthouse. Uh, it's an 1880s image, I believe. And, you know, the original courthouse in the town was in the center of the square, built in 1804, torn down in 1850. Uh, 1859 and then this courthouse was built on Baltimore Street and of course still stands today with an addition on it but in this image you can see Baltimore Street and Middle Street and there's one of the original water pumps in the town in the photograph but also in the photograph um, you see the courthouse and on top of the courthouse there's a, um, a fancy uh, weather vane and we actually have the uh, cornice uh, piece on top of the courthouse and the weather vane that uh, was above it at the time. And um, also in the photograph, which I think is uh, fascinating, 
uh, around the uh, base of the um, cupola of the courthouse, you see these wooden uh, fenials um, of uh, an interesting design. I don't know exactly what to call the design, but we actually have one of Look those original uh, fenials from the courthouse in our collection right here. And uh, I do not know when this was removed from the courthouse. If you go look at it today, you can see they are not there anymore, but you can see it appears in this uh, 1880s photograph. Um, and I imagine there were four of them on the four corners of the cupola of the courthouse. And, and let me just say that, you know, you, you've seen finials before. You see them on your stair, stairway posts and whatnot, but you also saw them during the Civil War. Uh, you would have seen them uh, usually, I think, made of uh, brass on top of Union bayonet scabbards. And as we all know, the Confederate scabbards had, uh, had uh, uh, lead finials on top of them. If, if I'm wrong, I know Chris White is going to jump in and kill me on this. Guys, come on back over here. We hope you enjoyed this little jaunt just for some of the things the Adams County Historical Society is cataloging. And they, trust me, even behind the scenes, they're as amazed as I hope you are to see some of these things that are coming out of boxes that haven't been opened in decades and are finally being cataloged. So we're, we're big fans of the ACHS, guys. Thanks so much. Anything else to Thank say? Thank you, Gary. We appreciate it. <laughs> good, good. Happy 19th to everybody. All right, Jess. If, if the word is happy dedication day or have a meaningful dedication day, that's great. Andrew Dalton, Tim Smith, Chris White behind the camera, thank you so much for helping us. And thank you all for watching and for supporting Battlefield Preservation and Education.